are great here at the King Center. We're paused, however, for the national anthem. We'll be right back with you momentarily. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to basketball action today on the campus of Emory and Henry College as we're going to have a double header here tonight at the King Center. First on the Bob Johnson court will be the men's basketball team taking on the visiting shock of Washington Adventist. I'm Joy Scruggs bringing you the play-by-play. -play. Alongside me is... Brandon Cox. Brandon, you want to give us the starters for the visiting shock? Yes, um, please do not get mad at me if I butcher your name. Um, first, number one, Label Harris, sophomore guard, 5'11". Number three, Matt, Matt, Mattistis Pitt, senior guard, 6'1". Fifteen, number 15, Devin Flowers, sophomore, 4'6". Number 21, Ethan Murphy, junior, 4'6". And number 33, Dwayne Gardner, a forward senior, 6'4". All right, the shot come into tonight's contest 18 and 8 overall. They've won 11 of their last 14 games. Two of those losses come to common opponents that Emory and Henry uh, have had um, with the uh, shock. The keys to the game for Emory and Henry are going to be, oh, guess we're not doing that. Maybe not. Okay, keys to the game. Well, let's get back to the keys to the game. I'll give you the starting lineup because we're not going to do the usual <laughs> video intro. A 5'11 sophomore guard from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Number two, Patrick Antonelli, comes in with six points a game, 4.2 assists a game. A 6'2 senior guard from Simpsonville, South Carolina. Number three, Micah Banks. Micah is averaging 8.3 points a game. A 6'3 guard from Concord, North Carolina, a junior, number four, Malcolm Morgan, averaging 12 points a game, almost four rebounds a game. At forward, a six foot five freshman from Clintwood, Virginia, number 32, Gabe Brown, 14.3 points a game, blistering it at 52.1% field goal percentage. And rounding out the lineup for Emory and Henry, a six eight freshman from Grundy, Virginia, number 44, Cade Looney, 15.3 points a game for Cade, almost seven rebounds a game, and shooting 55% from the field. Emory and Henry's wearing their alternate home uniforms, yellow with navy numerals. The Shock are wearing gray uniforms with orange numerals. I always look at the visitors to see, am I going to be able to read their numbers? Maybe, maybe not. Emory and Henry and the Shock have four common opponents. Boyers, Salem, Bluefield State, and the Prentice School. And both teams lost to the same common opponent and also won against the same common opponent. So that doesn't really give us any kind of advantage and clue as to what's going to happen in tonight's game. The Wasps enter tonight's game at 14 and 8 overall, having lost four of their, uh, all four of their games in February. But that's due to some key injuries, I'm going to say. Looney taps it up for Emory and Henry. It gets batted away by Harris, and Harris controls it for the shock. Emory and Henry starting out in a 1-3-1 defense, playing the passing lane up stop. top is Gabe Brown. Harris passes inside to Garner, now kicks it out. Long two on the way, no good by Pitt. And Emory and Henry's Banks controls the rebound. Banks tries to push in 
transition, which is one of the keys for Emory and Henry in tonight's game. Man-to-man -man defense by the shock. Banks with it on the right-hand wing. Antonelli sets a back screen, now steps out from the paint. Gives it to Brown. Brown hand off to Banks on the right-hand wing. Banks tries to get it inside. Puts it off the glass, no good. Rebound by the shock. That was Flowers on that rebound. Harris guarded by Antonelli. It looks like we're in playing man-to-man -man now. Pass down low to Murphy. Murphy kicks it out to Pitt. High post, Flowers. No, that's, uh, that's Garner. Garner on the step out. Tries to get it down low. Does. Flowers on the little turnaround hook. And that's good. Flowers averaging 15 points a game. First points of the night for either squad. And the Shocker up two to nothing. Paul, ball on the right-hand wing at Banks. Now Looney on the step out. Gives it back to Antonelli. There on the go. screen on the roll. Tries to get it into Looney. Gets batted away. Brown comes up with it. Oh, and he just like, kind of little lays it up over the rim there from the middle of the paint in front of the rim. And Emory and Henry ties it up at two. Ball on the wing to Pitt. Short corner to Flowers. He can't get it to fall. Oh. Enough. Ball got, may have been an on goal there. We may have tapped that one in. And the shock now are up 4-2. Banks brings it up for Emory and Henry. Hand off to Morgan. Morgan asks for a ball screen. That's one of the keys to the game, and a foul's going to be called on. Who's that foul on, Brandon? Ethan Murphy, his first team first. So that was one of the keys for Emory and Henry is to use a lot of ball screens and come off of them tight with the intention of getting the ball inside to the paint. We didn't come off that one very tight, but they got called for a foul anyway. Antonelli with the ball, gives it to Looney. Ooh. Looney's three's on the way, no good, too strong. Rebound by Garner for the shot. And here comes Pitt, pass ahead to Flowers. Flowers gets it down low, muscles his way and up off the rim, and that gives the shock the 6-2 lead. They've been able to get it inside. Transition. And in transition, Banks misses the left-hand layup. Looney's there for the follow-up. He gets it swatted away by Flowers, but that's going to be a foul on him. Team second. 17-40 in first half action. Emory and Henry trails 6-2. to two. Looney's going to go to the free throw line for Emory and Henry. Looney had a day in their last contest at, uh, well, heck, heck, let me get down there and I'll tell you. At Salem, 35 points. Mm. He went 10 for 10 at the free throw line. Well, he broke that streak now. He's had 11 games where he shot 100% from the free throw line. He doesn't have to worry about that tonight as he's missed the first one. That pressure's off now. He can make all the rest of them. <laughs> Career high 35 points, as I said, uh, February 12th at Salem. And that one rolls all around and falls out. Unusual for Looney to miss one, much less two. And Emory and Henry play in the 2-3 zone now. The shot, kick it out on the right-hand wing to Murphy. Now back up top to Harris. Harris being guarded by Banks. Try to get it down low to Flowers. It gets tipped away. Flowers tracks it down outside. We've got nine on the shot clock as Garner tries to get inside. Can't. Side dribble. Oh, Harris puts the up the three inside, outside, and it's no good. And Antonelli goes up for the rebound. That's a foul on 20, number 21, Ethan Murphy. I believe his second, team third. That suits me just fine if they want to get in foul trouble. 17.09 first half. Emory and Henry trail 6-2. Little full court pressure coming here to give Emory and Henry some trouble getting the ball inbounds, but Morgan comes up to help as they were denying the ball to Antonelli. Antonelli now with it on the left-hand wing, waiting on a ball screen by Looney, doesn't get it. Brown faces up and drains that three. Gabe Brown from three. Get Emory and Henry with one, six to five. Oh, my gosh. We fell asleep on that. And Harris is able to make this direct pass down low, cross court to Flowers on the left-hand block for the easy two. Eight, five, Emory and Henry trails. Banks with the ball on the right-hand wing. Up top to Morgan, Malcolm Morgan. Spin move by Morgan. Screen. Gets by his man, tries to feed it inside the loony. It gets deflected out of bounds, but that was a... What do they call that in, in football when you can't? It's uh, uncatchable. <laughs> that was uncatchable, <laughs> even without the deflection. 
Emory and Henry ball inbounds underneath their baskets. Too short by Morgan. Antonelli breaks up the fast break. And the ball's back up top to Harris. Down to the short corner. Can't see who that is. That's Garner. Now back up top. Flowers outside. Garner from the high post. His shot's too strong. Emory and Henry tracks down the long rebound. Antonelli looks in transition, finds Gabe Brown. Oh, Brown puts him. it on the deck. Travel. Antonelli tried to make a little move and travels. Official timeout here of 15.53 remaining in the first period. Emory and Henry trails the visiting Washington Adventist shock, eight to five. Support for WEAC and Emory Henry Wasp basketball comes proudly from Tom Graham and Kyle King of Edward Jones Investments, 126 East Main Street, Marion. Learn what investing can do for you, 276-783-4448 or edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. The food special is bringing you quality, price, satisfaction, found in a small rural area to serve friends and neighbors. Food Country has evolved to serve Southwest Virginia and East Tennessee, locally owned and operated. Your money stays in your community. Food Country is proud to support Emory Henry Walsh basketball on WEAC 90.7 FM. So keys to the game, Emory and Henry uh, offense have already taken care of a couple or started on a couple, push in transition and run a lot of ball screens, which they've been looking to do. Also, they want to play inside and out, which I haven't really noticed that too much yet. Nope attack the gaps and get to the free throw line. Well, we shot a couple and didn't make them. Have good spacing and cut with a purpose. On defense, we want to communicate loud, early and often. And three quarter deny the post. Emory and Henry comes out from the timeout playing their 1-3-1 one, one defense with Gabe Brown in the length at the top. Harris takes it inside, kick out, three on the way. Three is good. That three is by Pitt. He averages 14 points a game. And they got to get that pick and roll game going. Yeah, Antonelli with it out top gives it to Brown. Brown can't get inside. Get, well, he does get inside, but he kicks it back out to Rodriguez. Rodriguez just going to take huh. the three. Almost knocked that one down. Can't. Oh, and there's. Can you step out of bounds? Nope. Foul? Hold. Oh. Foul called on Jake Monahan, his first. Team first. It's good to have Jake back in the lineup. He missed. He's one of the injured players I was talking about. Leftwich and Moynihan both got injured playing in their last game, January 31st. And Emory and Henry hasn't won since they've been out of the lineup. One three one by the Wasp. The shot just passing around the perimeter. Got it inside to the free throw line. That jumper Oof. is good by Pitt. Pitt's their number one three point attempter and maker. But that one was a long two. Antonelli picks up his dribble. Moynihan skips it to Brown. Brown's three on the way, no good. Moynihan battles for that rebound. Tries to put it back up. Kicks it out to Antonelli. Swinging around the perimeter. Rodriguez with it on the right-hand wing. Mo Moynihan faces up, gets it batted away, gets it back. Now it's batted away again. Scramble four on the floor. It's on the shot clock. And as Morgan's trying to pick it up, on number 33, Dwayne Gardner, his first team fourth. And we got a sub, Jacob Morgan coming in for Gabe Brown. All right, so we just got, we just have one Morgan on the floor right now, which is handy for me. And that's Jake Morgan. We got two Morgan. Yeah, Antonelli with it up top, being guarded man to man, looks for Moynihan on the roll and Moynihan's there. And nifty little switch to the left hand to use the rim as a defense, uh, as a, to keep the defense off, and he's able to finish that. 13-7, Emory and Henry trails in man-to-man. -man, no, zone defense by the Wasps. Gets it inside, kicks it around the perimeter of the shock. They uh, try to find Pitt at the at the free throw line. It gets batted out of bounds. It'll be shock ball underneath their basket with 14 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Emory and Henry now go to playing a zone defense here on the out of bounds. Into Flowers at the short corner. He tries to make a move, almost gets it batted away by Moynihan on the right-hand perimeter by Lorino. 
two oh. shot too long, and Moynihan comes away with the rebound. Gives it to Rodriguez, who brings it in transition, trailing 13-7, just under 14 minutes Ooh, to play in the first half. Rodriguez picks up his dribble in a trap, gets it out to Moynihan. Somebody's got to be open, and, and that's threes on the way by Morgan. No good. Run out, pass ahead to somebody on the shock, and Emery and Henry bre breaks up that transition. So we were the ones that wanted to push and run. And it looks like the shock are doing that. And that was a foul on Rodriguez, his first, team second. And that sends Darius Huff to the free throw line, the 6'5 junior from Newport News. He's a 74% free throw shooter, but he knocks that one down. Uh, Banks coming in for Malcolm Morgan. So on the floor we have Banks, Antonelli, Jake Morgan, Rodriguez, and Moynihan. Second shot on the way for, and for Huff, and it's too short. Emery and Henry comes away with the rebound. Antonelli pushes it. Banks cranks up the three in transition. It's not falling for him. No. Have we hit a three yet? We are one for seven. So Harris gets inside with it, kicks it out. Now back to Harris on the left-hand wing. He's going to jack up the three, no good. Oh. Oh, but Huff is there for the stick back. And Emory and Henry now trails 13 to seven. And boards were a big part of the keys to the game. And Emory and Henry's not getting it done there. Jacob Morgan with it on the right-hand wing, gives it to Rodriguez and trying to get the ball inside. Rodriguez is going to get called for the charge. The second, team third, like sending in some bigs. Kate Looney and Gabe Brown coming in for Jake Monahan and Kevin Rodriguez. Emory and Henry playing the 1-3-1. One, on the perimeter, down low to Flowers. Flowers tries to make a move. Antonelli dives down on him and ties it up. The possession error favors the Wasps. 12.39 remaining in the first period. Emory and Henry trails 16 to seven. I don't think Emory and Henry's got any kind of rhythm or mm -mm. comfort level yet on offense. Jacob Morgan comes up, sets a screen for Antonelli. Now on the step out, the dribbles over. Hands off to Banks. Back to Brown up top. Brown there tries to find a cutting Antonelli. Antonelli gives it up to Looney. Looney tries to put it up and gets it blocked out of bounds, but they're going to give it to the shot. So I don't know how that happens. But it happens. Emory and Henry trailing 16 to 7. 1-3-1 one, one defense here. As I said, Brown at the top. Looney. Antonelli's in the back. But wow. They, they get it to uh, Huff at the short corner, and he does a reverse layup past Antonelli and scores it. 18 to 7, Emory and Henry trails. One more. There we there go. There we go. Jake, I mean, uh, Gabe Brown for three in the corner. If we can get that lighten up, we'll be on our way. 18 to 10, Emory and Henry trails. 1-3-1, one, one. Well, ball to the been? wing. Now back up to the top as they penetrate, kick it out. That's... Loreno kicks it out. Inside now trying to skip across the perimeter and it's deflected out of bounds, almost went out to the train tracks. So with timeout under 12 minutes to play here in the first period, we're at 11.33. Emory and Henry trails 18 to 10. Support for WEAC and ENH Walks basketball comes proud from People Incorporated, believing that every person needs support from others. People Incorporated promotes the dignity of individuals and families moves people into the economic mainstream and works to develop existing strengths and resources within communities. For information about assistance with community development, education, employment training, family services, financial services, or housing, contact 276-623-9000 or peopleinc.net. All the efforts of People Incorporated are directed by the concerns, hopes, needs, and dreams of the people served. 
Emory & Henry Basketball is brought to you with support by First Bank & Trust, offering mobile banking, Apple Pay, remote deposits, and more. Serving you with free checking since 1979. Member FDIC and on the web at firstbank.com. Well, one of the keys to the game was to keep the ball out of the post and don't let the shot get it inside. Well, they've scored 12 points in the paint, Emory & Henry with four. And since Emory and Henry shooting a dismal 31% from the floor, something good's got to happen here for the Wasps. And, you know, it's not like they're posting up a guy and, and you know, giving it to him and he's working. They're, they're getting it off movement as well, getting the, the ball inside. Um, Flowers is getting it at the short corner and taking it inside. Now Flowers has it at the top on the inbounds pass. Emory and Henry deflects it away, coming in transition. Jacob Morgan. Now. Finds Malcolm Morgan in the corner and he go. connects for three. So now Emory and Henry getting a little rhythm somewhere. Now they're three of nine from three. Playing the one, three, one. Flowers with it up top. He's going to try to take the three. It's too strong. Emory and Henry tracks down the rebound. Banks with it. Being double teamed. Gets it out to Somebody's Malcolm up Morgan. Up ahead to Jacob Morgan. Now back to Gabe Brown. Oh. Brown picked up his dribble. Jacob Morgan brings it around the perimeter to Banks. We got 15 on the shot clock. Banks looking for something to happen. I guess Banks is the point guard in there now. Banks just going to dribble, pull up. The shot won't mm. fall for him. And out come the shot. Got to get back. Huff takes it all the way. Is that Huff? They yeah. caught a block. Well, because he was underneath the backboard. He wasn't even close to being out of the restricted arc. Well, like he barely touched him. Yeah, that's true. But that's on Gabe Brown, his first, team fourth. So that sends Huff to the free throw line. Huff's a 74% free throw shooter. He's one of two on the game. And Emory and Henry trails 20 to 13. Huff's free throw will fall through. Was that? Did that come from the band over there, the six-man band? You may have heard them playing while Brandon was trying to shout out the underwriters' information at timeout there. So Emory and Henry trailing 21 to 13 with 10:33 remaining in the first period. Malcolm Morgan sets up the Wasps on offense, gives it to Cade Looney. Looney, hand off to Morgan back on the. Right-hand wing, Looney from the short corner tries to operate, has nothing, gives it to Jacob Morgan, now to Malcolm. Malcolm tries to make a move, gets in the middle of the defense, tries to float it into Looney, can't get it there, but it's deflected out of bounds. Block, this time, block, it's, going to, it's going to be to the Wasp. There's eight seconds on the shot clock as Antonelli re-enters the lineup for Emory and Henry. Now to Looney. Banks looks for the cutter, doesn't have it. There Antonelli's going to have to take that shot. Oh, gosh, halfway down and back out. That's our ball. Yep. But Banks tries to save it from going out of bounds, hits it off a shock player. And Emory and Henry will have it with the reset 20 underneath their basket, trailing 21-13, almost halfway through this first period of action. They need some backdoor cutters. There's Nova. Malcolm Morgan, makes a little move. Antonelli feeds it to Looney. Looney back to Malcolm Morgan. Six moves on the baseline to Malcolm. Kicks it out to Banks. Micah's floater's no good, oh. and it's tipped away, and Emory and Henry battles on the floor for it. And we're still battling on the floor for good it. Hustle. Good hustle. And finally, we get enough possession of it to no. call timeout. Call a timeout first. Yeah, but they're saying the, the shot clock violation. Oh, come so, on. So. Come on. You, you have a hard time complaining about if there was a clock error when you're at home because it's your clock operator. 942, Emory and Henry trails 21-13. 1-3-1 by the Wasps. Passing around the perimeter are the shot. Inside, lost it, back out. Harris trying to make a move to get inside, does, stops, kicks it out to Flowers. Flowers, long two on the way is no good. Looney Come with on, the rebound. Corner, corner, 
And Antonelli gets it inside in transition, finds Looney. Looney gets it back out. Banks, three on the way, no good. Rebound, controlled by the shot. In transition, it gets batted away. Who was the shooter? Was that number three? Uh, yes. Pitt. So in transition, he got it, and I couldn't tell you who knocked it away. There were three wasps there. Inbounds to Harris, 23 on the shot clock. He tries to get it inside. They got caught out every single time. And Malcolm Morgan. Oh, I thought it was going to be on Malcolm. I so too. Uh, I was on Banks, his first, team fifth. It's been so long since we had a game. I was like, oh, good, we're shooting. And I said, like, no, that's the women's game. <laughs> um, Rodriguez coming in for Banks. Twenty on the shot clock. Shock with the ball underneath their basket. They get it in bounds to Pitt. Pitt skips it around the perimeter. A long two on the way is too strong. Emory and Henry battles out. for the rebound. Flowers just gets it over. Did he get it over Brown? Anyway, yes. he was able just to sky up there and pick it out of the sky. Antonelli being guarded man to man gives it to Looney. Swing around the perimeter. Rodriguez three on the way. That's no good. And there's nobody there for the rebound. Nothing is falling. As Harris gets stopped by Antonelli, tries to get it inside, picks it up. Flowers down low. Can't get it to him as Brown up top. And Harris drives by everybody, lays it in. 25 13. Emory and Henry trails. I, I feel like we haven't scored in about since Wednesday. Skip, skipping around the perimeter, Gabe Brown with it, tries to get inside. He's being guarded by a much smaller guy, but in his spin move, he draws two defenders. Is that going to be on so. Flowers? Yep. That's on Flowers. His second, team fifth. And Jacob Morgan is coming in for Gabe Brown. 20 on the shot clock. Emory and Henry with the ball underneath their basket, trailing 25 13. Looney hands it over to Malcolm Morgan, who's going to set up some sort of offense. Skip on that slip on that screen, and Looney goes to the rim and can't finish. 25 13, under eight to play here. Pitt does a little fake, shoots a three, hits nothing, rebounds there. And the stick back's no good. Antonelli yeah, bats run. the ball out of the scrum. Comes away in transition. Has nowhere to go with it. Gets it inside. Kicks it out to Rodriguez. Rodriguez gets it inside. Kicks it to Antonelli. You're going to have to shoot that one. And Looney's there to battle for the rebound. Boy, he got held on that. He kicks it around. There's Jacob Morgan. Three there from the go. corner is good. Finally. So what's that make our three count now? A three. Four, four, 12? So in transition, Three, I think you know. that's Daniels missed that shot. And Emory and Henry comes back in transition that's and draws the foul. Could even tell you who that foul was on. And they'll tell Eight. you here in a minute. Oh, five. On Pitt. Wait, no, Brown. Brown is first, team six. So it's just gotten worse. The points in the paint. The Shock have 18 of their 25 points in the paint. And Emory and Henry with four. You know, and one of the keys to the game was to run in transition and use the screen and roll. We've been very ineffective. We had that great look on that last possession, or recently anyway, mm -hmm. where Looney slipped the screen and we got the ball to him and point blank missed at the rim. Those are the kind of shots you have to, you're going to have to make. Um, let's see, what's our shooting percentage now? It's gone down Goodness. to 27%. The shock are shooting 44% from the floor. And Emory and Henry, and one of their one of our keys was to attack and get to the free throw line. We've been twice, and that's when Looney went like in the first, you know, three first, minutes yeah. of play. And we're 0 of 2 at the free throw line. So you can just look at these keys to the game and go, nope, nope, nope. nope. So imagine in that last time out, we may have discussed some of those nopes. But they've been getting good shots. So they just 
haven't been falling. No, yeah, when you're four of 13 from three, um, and they've taken four, run, run. They're, they're pounding it inside. If we're going to try to live by the outside game, we're going to have to hit some. 25-16, Emory and Henry Trail, 7.03, first period. Ball out of bounds underneath our basket. Jacob Morgan with it. Looks at a screen by Looney. Looney posting up down low. Looney takes it, makes his little baby hook move, no good. And Malcolm. Malcolm fouls, pushes somebody from behind. He had no chance at position on that rebound. Malcolm Morgan, his first, team six, and he is getting replaced by Micah Banks. Well, one of the keys to the game was to use your screen and rolls and come off of them tight. And I seem like every time, I think every time we screen, there's like three body links between the screener mm -hmm. and the person coming off the screen. Emery and Henry trying this 1-3-1 one, one to see if they can disrupt this offense. Five on the, uh, three on the way by number five, Brown. And it bounces up and hits the support system. So that will be a turnover to the Wasps. 6-42. 25-16, Emory and Henry trails. We just have nothing going offensively. Well, as you can see, we have 16 points. <laughs> you know, we've played 14 minutes, 15 minutes, and we have 16 points. Antonelli with it up top, and the shot playing man-to-man -man here. A screen and roll will work. Rodriguez takes it inside, tries to put it up. He draws the foul. That's a foul. That's what coach was talking about. They needed to get the ball inside and get to the free throw line. Foul on number two, Lorino. Actually, it's on number five. Oh, isn't number it? five. It's his second. Brown. Those are two up there. It's his second foul. <laughs> so that sends Rodriguez to the free throw line. First free throws for him for the night. He's an 88.9% free throw shooter, and he's good on the first one. It's nice to have Jake Moynihan back Moynihan. Avail available. And we apologize <laughs> to the Moynihan family for calling him Monahan for the, all the games prior to this. But you don't know what you don't know. And I don't know. And I don't know either. A lot I don't know. And, <laughs> and good on that for Rodriguez. Pulls Emory and Henry within seven, 65-18. Emory and Henry in the 1-3-1 again. Harris with it up top. Feeds Garner on the step out. Gets it to the left-hand wing. Gets it inside. Picks it up. Uh oh Huff gets it inside. Kicks it out. Three on the way from the left-hand corner is buried by Marabito. That's Nick Marabito, 6'2 freshman from Upper Darby, PA. Antonelli kicks it around the perimeter to the left to Banks. Banks gets it inside. Lays it high. There we oh, go. yeah. Runner by Banks is good. Exactly, getting the ball inside in transition. Right hand wing, passing across. Now up top to Liriano. Liriana gets the ball inside, kicks it out. Garner, three on the way, three no good. Rebound, long tip out. Emory and Henry tries to track it down and can't. Harris. Three on the way, bangs off no good. Antonelli rakes in that rebound. Now Corner. we're trying to get something going in transition. There we go. Good. Good. Jake Morgan, oh, oh, three's long. Emory and Henry battles for the rebound, and here come the shock in transition. That's us, get on the ball. Yep, we cut him off there. He hits the floor, and Emory and Henry comes out with it. Rodriguez takes it up, oh. no good. Jacob Morgan there, there for go. the putback. And Emory and Henry closes it to six, 28-22, under five to play. And you can hear the place getting a little excited about this run we're on. Garner takes it from outside, tries to take it all the way down, almost loses it out of bounds, gets double teamed at the baseline in an attempt to get it out of there, gets batted out of bounds. That will be shock ball underneath their basket. There's 17 on the shot clock. And Emory and Henry still trails by six. Emory and Henry playing a zone here. Three on the way, no good. Rebound by Huff. Huff trying to make a move to the basket. It's going to draw a foul. Foul on Jacob Morgan, his first team seven.
Puff's a 74% free throw shooter on the season. These will be his, he's already been to the free throw line three times tonight, he's two of three. Let's see, who's that that came in for them? 10, Martin. And Cave Looney's coming in for Jake Monahan. Moynihan. Moynihan. So we're happy to have the people who are listening to us on WEHC and those who are viewing us on uh, the live stream. You just saw Coach Rick Thompson mop up the floor there. And Huff is set to shoot. And that first one is good. Stretches the lead back to seven for the shock. We're at 433 remaining in the first period. Emory and, Henry, Emory and Henry has Antonelli, Rodriguez, Looney, Jacob Morgan, and Micah Banks on the line on the floor. Second one's no good, and Jacob Morgan rakes in the rebound for Emory and Henry. Rodriguez finds Looney. Looney at the free throw line there drains we go. Good it. Shot. Yeah, there we go, Cade. Draws Emory and Henry within five. I don't think we've been this close in forever. One through one defense. Nope. Miriano, I don't know how you say his name. We need to find that out at halftime. We Banks. get no pronunciation guide. He Banks. misses. Emory and Henry comes away with it. Three on the way hey. to the corner. Jacob Morgan. They need that spark. That's his second three of the night. And Emory and Henry now is trailing just by two. You can hear the crowd yelling defense as they get it to Garner for three. He's going to take it, and he drains it. The big guy, Garner, is a 6'4 senior. We were talking about him before the game. He looks like he could play defensive end. He's a big body, but he knocked down that three. Emory and Henry's Banks trying to get it inside. Hands off to Looney, now back to Banks, swinging around the perimeter. Uh -oh, shoot. Jacob Morgan's shot is too long there and rebounded by the shot. 322, Emory and Henry trails by five now, 32-27. Shot on the way from the corner is no good by Huff, and Emory and Henry comes in transition. Banks good. just takes Ooh. it all the way himself, exactly. If nobody picks you up, you just slice your way through the defense and go to the rim. So media time out here, we're at 306 remaining in the first period. Emory and Henry trails the visiting shock, 32-29. But there's been some life here on offense. Emory and Henry now has 12 points in the paint. We were at four the last time we talked about it, while the shock are still at 18. Um, we're still five of 16 from three, but those flurry of threes by Jacob Morgan has certainly helped our cause as well. It's been a pretty clean game as far as turnovers go. Just three uh, by each of the teams here. It looks like they're not uh, too much following their keys to the game. Really much. I mean, they are, but the threes helped them out a little bit. Yeah, well, the transition game just then with Banks just taking it all the way to the rim, that helped me out on every possession. And we have attacked and gotten to the free throw line, so I would imagine we may, the coaches may review these keys to the game again at halftime as they have gotten away from them quite a bit here. We'll remind you if you're unaware of this, we're telling you for the first time. Following this game, Emory and Henry women will play Bluefield State on a game that was rescheduled from last Thursday night. So the game will start either at 7.30 or 30 minutes after the men's game, whichever is, it won't start before 7.30, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Emory and Henry out of that timeout in their one through one Garner with it outside, tries to take Looney in, spin move. Tries to put it up and under Looney, can't. Travel. Rebound <clears throat> by Huff. Huff puts it up and in. Antonelli was battling for the rebound, but Huff has got quite the size advantage there. 241, Emory and Henry now trails five. Antonelli tries to go off a ball screen by Looney. 
Ball gets batted away out of bounds. It will remain Wasp basketball. There's 21 now on the shot clock. Banks will take it, will throw it in for Emory and Henry. Oh, Banks ooh. tries to find Rodriguez. It's almost picked off. Rodriguez with the Euro step inside. Got, got his shot blocked by Garner. And Tonelli now Eight, finds Rodriguez five, in the right-hand corner, seven, gets it down low to Looney. Looney powers it up, but not with enough strength and misses a, again just underneath the basket. He's getting, he's getting good looks. Garner with it at the free throw line, puts it up, can't get it to fall. And Rodriguez is there for the rebound for Emory and Henry in transition to Banks. Banks, just take it all the way back again, Banks. <laughs> But he can't get that one to fall, and Garner rebounds it for the shot. In transition, Martin, three on the way, too strong, and, Gar and Rodriguez with another rebound. We're there at 150, we and Emory and Henry trailing by five. Banks kicks it out to Rodriguez. Shoot. Looney, free throw line shot, no good. Banged around and rebounded by Garner. And they're going to call a foul on Garner? He, yep. does, he looks dejected, so I'm guessing that's the case. <laughs> We're at 140, and Emory and Henry trails 34-29. It'll be a one-and-one -one situation for both teams. And who's going to the free throw line? Jacob Morgan. Jacob I'm not Morgan. even sure I saw him in there. Free throw is good by Jake Morgan. Jacob Morgan, sorry. Good time out. So anything jump out at you on the stats there? Yes, at one point we, uh, the shock had 18 points in the paint. And then at, at that time we, they had more points in the paint than we had actual points. Yeah. That actually had shocked me at one point. And then our total rebounds is definitely getting up there again. Um, that boost from the bench, I think really helped them out, really. I mean, they're getting up there in points in the paint. I mean, I can see it's a pretty even, it's a pretty well even stat line. Especially since we've closed it to four. Mm -hmm. So it'll be Jacob Morgan at the free throw line for his second attempt. And he ne makes both of them. He's an 84% free throw shooter on the season. Emery and Henry now trails by three, 34-31 with one and a half minutes to play. Swinging around the perimeter. Inside, jumper no good by Pitt. Oh. And it gets tapped out, and the back shock court. touches it on the front court and chases it into the back court. So that's a violation that gives Emory and Henry a possession here at 120, trailing by three. Antonelli will get the ball in bounds from Jacob Morgan. The shock have played man-to-man -man this entire period. Antonelli can't get anywhere, hands it off to Banks. 20 on the shot clock. Banks goes off a ball screen by Looney. Gets yes, it all the foul. way, almost gets to the rim, but he gets it fouled as he gets closer to the restricted arc. That's on 22. Huff a is first. A reach in by Huff. They said team eight, team ninth. Yeah, team ninth, so we'll shoot on the next one. Whether We've got a minute and six seconds left, so maybe not. Banks, a 53% free throw shooter, but he buries that first one like he does it every day. <laughs> Come on, here we go, here we go, let's go. That's five points now for Banks. Next one is also good for Banks. We got one oh. We have one oh five to play. Emory and Henry trails by one. One three one. No man to man defense by Emory and Henry. Passing across the top. 
Liriano being guarded by Rodriguez. Now a step out by Pitt. Back to Liriano. He gets it inside go. and it gets picked off by Rodriguez on the kick out. Rodriguez in transition oh. tries to find Jacob Morgan. He passed it to a couple of students who were walking in just before halftime. So we're at 39 seconds remaining, 34-33. Emory and Henry trails. Martin inside the pit. Pitt can't get it to fall. Now the Wasp have a chance in transition here or hold Ooh. for one. We're at 20, 20, 22 seconds remaining. Emory and Henry trails by one, 34-33. Coach Thompson telling them what to do. We've got three guys on the baseline. Uh -oh. Go! Go! Hand off to Rodriguez. Rodriguez gets it all the way to the rim, scores Go. the layup. Great score by Rodriguez. And Emory and Henry will take the one-point lead into the locker room. 35-34, if I'm not mistaken, that's our first lead of the game. We may have tied it up at the first when they went up two to nothing, but that's our first lead of the game. So <clears throat> at halftime here, we'll send it back to Anthony Smith Jr. at WEHC Studio. Anthony, if you'll send it back to us about three minutes before the start of the second half, we'll recap the first half action. So back to you, Anthony. Thank you, Joy and Brandon. All right, now stay tuned as we'll be back for some more basketball action at the conclusion of halftime right here on 90.7 WEHC Radio. <laughs> Look at this. We led for three seconds. I'm going to assume that must have been four to two. Yeah, this has been one of the keys that we've caught up. You know, it was like 18 to, it was 18 to four at one point. That's been one of the keys. And... They said get out and transition. Yeah, no. Well, that's, you know, we haven't really done that, but we yeah. got the. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of something with points in the paint. Not well, the shooting's hmm. leveled out, too. We're at 33%. They're at 35. Oh, yeah. Took 40 shots in the first. Oh, my goodness. Well, we took 36. Jeez. So is it a defensive matchup, or are we just not hitting shots? That's what it is. We're just not hitting shots. That'd be that'd be what I'd say. We haven't been to the you know one of the keys is get to the free throw line. Well, we mm -hmm. haven't been there very much. Yeah, the eight versus their five. So looking at these keys to the game. Well, we get down in transition, but then we just hold up. I guess we don't have anything. We haven't played inside out, really. Nope. No. Um, not really. Get to the free throw line. Well, it's not at the beginning anyway. When they go in transition, nobody's running. It's yeah. like two people. Yeah. There's definitely nobody's rim running. Well, the defense. Uh, yeah, I think the defense has been pretty. I mean. The fouls? Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. Yeah. We haven't really boxed out. We just, we've no. just been owning the board. Heck no. Yeah, we've just been getting the rebounds. And they haven't, we haven't had to front the post anyway because they haven't been posting anybody up. I mean, they've been getting the ball at the short corner, you know, or they've been driving it inside. They haven't been, they've been driving it inside, not pounding it inside.
Whenever you're ready, Anthony, we're ready. Okay, sounds good. As halftime news is in, we will now be singing it back to Jordan Brandon courtside for coverage on the second half for the Wasps are facing Washington Adventists. Thank you, Anthony. We're back at the Bob Johnson court here for second half action as, as Emory and Henry will try to close out this game against the shock from the visiting Washington Adventist University. So, Brandon, we looked at some stats at halftime, Emory and Henry led for three seconds of this game, and that was the three seconds right before halftime. Three seconds. <laughs> but hey, if you it doesn't matter if you're if you lead the last three seconds or the main three seconds you want to lead. So we had pointed out earlier about points in the paint, and there was a point at the in the game when Emory and Henry was being outscored in the paint, 18 to four, and closed that up and went on a. 10 to 2 run in the paint to end up with a 20 to 14 disadvantage in the paint. Looking at the keys of the game, Emory and Henry hasn't hit on too many on the offensive end. We wanted to push it in transition. Well, we've pushed it, but we haven't really scored in transition. Nope. We haven't played inside out. Nope. Uh, we've been to the free throw line how many times? Eight. Eight. I wouldn't call that really getting to the free throw line much in 20 minutes of play. Nope. Now, we haven't had much advantage coming off screens. Uh, but defensively, we've been able to uh, do a good job on the boards. Um, we have 17 defensive rebounds. They have 10 offensive rebounds. Um, and we've been able to play pretty much without fouling. They've been to the free throw line five times. We've only been eight. So um, mostly the Washington Adventist has made their money getting the ball inside. Inside. Yep. And Emory and Henry's played their 1-3-1 defense and as well as man-to-man. Uh, what are some of the individual scores, um, Brandon? Off the bench, Jacob Morgan giving Emory and Henry 10 points, which was a really big boost in the late, late, late of the first half. Um, Gabe Brown, eight, started off hot. Um, didn't take many shots after that. Micah Banks has six. Uh, Kevin Rodriguez off the bench, four, four points, five rebounds. So he's giving a nice little hustle. And then Malcolm Morgan, uh, Moy Moynihan, Looney, and Antonelli. Some production, but not much on the scoreboard. But, I mean. Well, when we, <laughs> when we look at the halftime shooting percentages, it's pretty well evened out. The shock were uh, lighting it up for the longest time. Of course, most of their points were in the paint, and Emory and Henry was – in the dismal zone of shooting percentage. Now they're both in the dismal zone. Uh, Emory and Henry shooting 33% from the floor and the shock shooting 35% from the floor. So keys to the second half, I think Emory and Henry's got to be able to, like we've said, the keys have been run in transition, get the ball inside. If you, we, we were able to, Jacob Morgan hit those threes from the corner. Uh, which, as you said, gave us a spark, but we've got to have some consistency on offense. Yes. And then keep Washington Adventists from getting the ball inside. So we start second half action here. I think it's going to be the – whose balls are going to be? I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll alert you now. The second game, the women's game, will not be on WEHC. We have some – staffing issues and so it will be on uh, the audio will be along of course with the live stream on gowas.com or facebook or youtube or whichever access you do for emory and henry sports but the audio just on whc will not be available emory and henry starts out this second half in man-to-man -man defense and the shock start off by getting it down low to flowers flowers tries to make a move face up no good antonelli come streaking in for the rebound for Emory and Henry trailing by I mean leading by one 
Antonelli with the ball up top. Man-to-man -man defense by the shot. Looney on the step out. Antonelli makes the backdoor cut. Great play. Great set by Emery and Henry. Antonelli looked like he was just going to go set a ball screen and then just slipped past his defender to the rim. And Looney, great pass by him. Emery and Henry, largest lead of the evening, leading by three, 37-34. That's Garner. Garner. Oh, no, wow. that's not Garner. That's Harris. Harris on the face up against Looney, knocks it down, long two. Hand off to Banks. And stepped out. Banks stepped out of bounds as he got ready to make his move. I heard some commentators talking recently like, how can they step out of bounds? And I'm like, they got size 18 shoes. <laughs> Pretty much. The three point line is, <laughs> you know, 10 inches from the sideline. You don't have much of a choice. Shock, ball up top, that's Pitt. Pitt, I mean, that's Harris going against Looney again. Thought he could face up and do it again. Good pass. And Looney in transition, dumps it down low to Morgan, Malcolm Morgan. Morgan hits the deck and gets to hit the free throw line as well. Who's that foul on? On Ethan Murphy, his third team first is half. 37-36 is the Emory and Henry lead. Morgan goes to the free throw line for the Wasps. Malcolm Morgan, this is his first free throws of the evening. He knocks down the first one. He's a 67% free throw shooter this season. Stretching it to two for Emory and Henry. Next shot short. And Flowers with the rebound for the shock. Emory and Henry in the 1-3-1 now. Murphy down to the corner. Up top to Flowers. Flowers being guarded. Down low to Huff. Huff can't get it to go oh, against on, Antonelli. And Huff got the rebound and went back up with it. So Malcolm Morgan, I think he believe second, team first. Huff goes to the free throw line. He's three of five on the night. He's 74 on the season. 74% that is. We're tied up at 38. That free throw's long, off the mark and the long rebound controlled by the shock, skipping around the perimeter. There goes Huff, he tries to kick it out. There's nobody there for it. And as, <laughs> is that Liri uh, Liriano tries to pick it up. He walks with it. We're tied at 38, 18 minutes remaining in the game. Inbounds to Looney, hand off to Antonelli. Dribbles over right, gives it to Looney. He faces up at the three point line. Kicks over to Gabe Brown. Brown dribbles over left hand wing, tries to get inside. Picks up his dribble in the paint, tries to kick it out to Banks. And it goes into the Emory and Henry bench. Those turnovers have been Totally unnecessary. Unnecessary turnover. Yep. Antonelli guarding Liriano. Bravo, bravo. And Flowers takes it from the three-point line to the rim. And the bench called it before the official did. And that'll be a travel on Flowers. We're still tied at 38. 17-35. Cut with purpose. Banks with, I mean, Morgan with it up top, hands off to Antonelli. Finds Gabe Brown on the left-hand wing, and he's going to walk My with it. goodness. How many turn? <laughs> uh, that's three turnovers for Emory and Henry since halftime. Let's go, let's go. Come on, let's stop. We had four in the first half. We've had three in the first two and a half minutes. Flowers with it up top. It's going to take Looney inside. Oh, oh that away. was an offensive foul. Got away with that one. Yeah, he just shoved Looney back and then laid it off the rim. 
So lead back to the shock, 40-38. Antonelli brings it up. Man-to-man -man defense by the shock. Dribble handoff to Morgan. Morgan tries to get past his defender. Puts it high off the glass, no good. Gets his own rebound and floats it over the rim for the finish. Tied it back up at 40. Emory and Henry playing 1-3-1. One, one. Antonelli at the wow. top. Wow, is right. Three-point shot by, who was that? Martin. Antonelli gets it inside, tries to skip it over to Brown. It gets deflected. Brown Point. ends up with it. He gets past his defender. Layup by Brown is good. Good take. That's 10 for Brown. Emory and Henry trails by one, 42, 43. Martin, now up top to Flowers, being guarded by Looney. Flowers just brings it out, oh, tries to get him. past Looney. He's gonna draw a foul on Looney. Ah. He's gonna push you first, and then when you push back, you're gonna get called for the foul. And by you, I mean Looney. Yep. <laughs> well, that's, Looney's, that's Looney's first? Huh. We're at 16.04, and Marine Henry trails 43-42. Looney not having a good day either. Shooting one for seven. Flowers at the free throw line for the shot. His first shot rolls around and pops out. 71% free throw shooter on the season. He's 0 of 1 for the night. Jake Moynihan coming in for Looney. Box out! Got shooter! Flower's second shot is good. Shock up by two, 44-42. Antonelli with the ball up top. Gets past his defender, gets it down low to Moynihan. Moynihan muscles his man, can't get it to fall. Rebound by Flowers for the shot. Pass ahead in transition. Now but back up top to Flowers. Flowers gonna take the three and wow. knocks it down. Flowers the 6'9" forward, Maybe knocks down the three and gives the shock the five point lead. Monahan, that's the strength we need inside. As Banks feeds Monahan down low, makes a move around his guy, gets it to the backboard and finishes it. Now deflection by Banks and up ahead to Brown. And Emory and Henry slices into the shock lead, trails now by one. A defense. Flowers just about had it picked by Morgan. Emory and Henry playing zone, who I thought he picked up his pivot foot. Harris with it on the left-hand wing. Back up top to Martin. Somebody's out of position. Huff tries to pass it around the perimeter and gets batted out of bounds by Emory and Henry. So with 14.54 remaining, we have a media timeout here. Emory and Henry trails by one, 47-46. <laughs> Support for WEAC and e &H Wise basketball comes from People Incorporated, believing that every person needs support from others. People Incorporated promotes the dignity of individuals and families, moves people into economic mainstream, and works to develop existing strengths and resources within communities. For information about assistance with community development, education, employment training, family services, financial services, or housing, Contact 276-623-9000 or peopleinc.net. All the efforts of People Incorporated are directed by the concerns, hopes, needs, and dreams of the people served. Yeah. So Emory and Henry lucky not to be trailing by more than one with three turnovers in the first two and a half minutes of second half action. The shock will have the ball out of bounds on their end of the court as Emory and Henry comes out from timeout. Emory and Henry playing man to man here. No, maybe not. No, they're playing, yeah, they are. And just like that, Harris 
loses his, shakes his defender, free of his defender, gets to the rim, pushes it back out to a three-point shock lead. Antonelli finds Morgan on the right-hand wing. Morgan goes away from the screen. Oh. Rodriguez tries to find Moynihan in inside when he tried to go up with it. It got stripped away. Now Emory and Henry bats it out in transition, but the shock are able to control it. Pitt with it. Now Harris, left-hand side, swinging around the perimeter. Martin's three is good. Nobody picked him up at all. And now it's back to a six-point lead. Malcolm Morgan with it up top. 20 on the shot clock, looking inside at Moynihan. Moynihan coming out to set the ball screen. Antonelli gives it to him. Malcolm Morgan looks for Moynihan inside. Rodriguez gets inside, draws two defenders. Malcolm Morgan's gonna have to put up the three. It's short, no good. Rebound by the shot. Shot clock was winding down. Somebody had to put it up. Emory and Henry playing a zone here. Flowers with it outside the paint, takes Monahan inside, and Monahan strips it away from him. Antonelli now in transition, tosses it back to Morgan. Jacob Morgan now for three, no good, but Monahan's there with it. Puts it back up, scores it, and it will go to the free throw line. Now that was inside out. We had it inside in transition. We kicked it out to Jacob Morgan on the left-hand baseline. His shot's no good, but Moynihan is there for the stick back, scores it, draws the foul, gets a chance for the and one. Moynihan, Moynihan's first trips to the free throw line tonight, trip to the free throw line is good. He's a 75% free throw shooter. Now Emory and Henry is trailing by three. Yeah, we got 22. Behind you, Kev! Behind you, Kev! One, three, one by Emory and Henry. Pitt with the long three. Rolls out, no good. good rebound. rebound. Battled four, and it goes out of bounds off the oh, shot. Uh, Banks coming in from Malcolm Morgan. 13.09. Emory and Henry trails 52.49. Banks bringing it up for the Wasp. Man-to-man -man defense all the way by the shot. Banks, we got, we have post players up top, off to Rodriguez in a ball screen, now swinging across to Jacob Morgan. Banks tries to get inside, hand off to Jacob Morgan. Rodriguez thinks about the three, puts it on the deck, kicks to Antonelli, three on the way, wow. too strong. Rebound, the shot, they have no advantage here in transition, so they give it up. Harris with it now. Flowers outside the three-point line on the left-hand wing, skips it all the way across. On three feet. on the way by Martin, no good. He follows his own shot, gets the rebound, stick back, won't go. Emery and Henry, Moynihan comes away with it. And Rodriguez there in transition, go. Euro step around Pitt. And Emery and Henry now trails by one with 12 minutes remaining. Flowers outside, thought about the two, will pull up at the free throw line, no good. On, Emory Antonelli. and Henry's Antonelli with the rebound. Antonelli, oh, Euro ball. step, yeah! Lay up for Emory and Henry, and now we're up one. Under 12 minutes remaining. Now we're going in transition. Oh. And Harris gets it inside in transition for the shock and draws the foul. Who's that foul on? on Moynihan, his second, team third. So we're at 11.51 remaining. Emory and Henry has come back from a six point deficit here in the last couple of minutes to go up one, 53-52. The food specialist bringing you quality, price, satisfaction found in a small rural area to serve friends and neighbors. Food Country has evolved to serve Southwest Virginia and East Tennessee. Locally owned and operated. Your money stays in your community. Food Country proud to support Emory Henry Walls basketball on WAC 90.7 FM. And support for WAC and Emory Henry Walls basketball comes proudly from Tom Graham and Kyle King of Edward Jones Investments, 126 East Main Street, Marion. Learn what investing can do for you, 276-783-4448 or edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. 
Well, one of the keys to the game for us was to try to keep the shark from pounding it inside. And they did pound it inside in the first part of the first half. Since halftime, we have outscored the shock in the paint 16 to 6. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. If we can keep that up, the running in transition has helped. At the free throw line is Lavelle Harris. First free throw of the night is good by Harris. 67% on the season for the 5'11 senior, uh, no, sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri, and ties it up. And then the next one is good to put the shot back in the lead. 11.51 on the floor for Emory and Henry, Rodriguez, Jacob Morgan, Gabe Brown, Jake Moynihan, and Banks, Rodriguez with it on the left-hand wing, gets past his defender, gets all the way to the rim, draws the foul before the shot. Was that Marabito? Yeah, Marabito, his first, team third. So Rodriguez will go for two, with Emory and Henry trailing by one. Rodriguez is 100%, he's hit both of his tonight. Knocking on wood. He's an 89% free throw shooter on the season. First shot is oh. short. And we both knocked on wood for those of you who <laughs> did not hear that. <clears throat> Don't need to hit these down the stretch. Oh. The second one misses. Oh, is right. So on the rebound, Flowers comes down with it. Moynihan is pressuring him. It looked like it went out off of Flowers' leg, but the officials are going to give it to the shock. Maybe they did that instead of calling a foul on Moynihan. I always appreciated the not calling the foul part. 1-3-1 one, one by Emory and Henry, as Harris has it on the right-hand wing. Three on the way is no good. And Emory and Henry in transition. Rodriguez holds up, finds Banks. Banks just takes it inside. Oh, and they're going to call the offensive foul on Banks. Well, he did. He, Coach Thompson is a little upset about it, but he, he lowered his shoulder like he was going uh, through the... Uh, uh, I don't uh, know about that call. Yeah, well, he lowered his <laughs> shoulder and went like on those drills in football where you're trying to keep the guys from ripping it out. Ball carrier. Emory and Henry trails by one. Coach Thompson is trying to get the fans going. Garner with it. Passes it down low to Flowers. Flowers can't finish. Oh, hustle Rebound. But, and Pitt puts up the floater and drains it. 10-55. Trailing by three. 56-53. The Wasps set up on offense against man-to-man. -man. Banks hands off to oh. Gabe Brown. Brown looks inside at Moynihan, no. passes it to the cheerleaders. Well, actually, the shock intercepted it before it got to the cheerleaders. And in transition, they kick out for a three. Nope, don't take it. Get it to Pitt. Now he kicks it out. Flowers, three on the way. Three no good. Rebound battle for. Stick back. Oh, wow. that was blocked by like a volleyball block by oh, transition. Jay Brown. And here comes Emory and Henry in transition. Banks. Takes it to the left, puts it high off the glass. It doesn't finish, but that'll send Banks to the free throw line. Now that's a textbook jump stop move. I like that. Oh, he's, and he's a, he's a little hobbled little, there. Little, little hobbled. We're at 10-17. Emory and Henry trails by three, 56-53. Right. Micah Banks at the free throw line to shoot two. He's three of three, three for the night at the free throw line. Got three subs, two subs coming in actually right now. Jacob Morgan and Jake Monahan coming out from for coming out for Kay Looney and Patrick Antonelli. And Banks will come out after this free throw. I'm sure to get checked on what happened. 
Oh, oh yeah, it rolled around and like banged around like it wasn't going to fall, but it did. That puts him four or four from the free throw line for the night. And Emory and Henry now trails one, 56-51. We're just over 10 minutes left to play in this game. Emory and Henry in the 1-3-1 one, one, with Brown at the top and Antonelli in the back. Harris. Oh, Good yeah, defense. it's batted away on the pass to um, Garner, but they gather it back up. Harris takes it all the way around, dumps it down to Garner. I'm not sure what kind of move that was, but it won't fall. But the rebound bats around and ends up in the hands of Brown for the shot. Gotta hold on to it. Morgan kicks it out to great Gabe Brown. Brown's three is on the way, and we're knotted up at 58. Another tie for Emory and Henry. Jumper is short. Uh. For the shot, but it's deflected off. Uh, I think that was Michael Brown. It's deflected out of bounds off Emory and Henry. So the Coming shock inside. will have it underneath. Garner tries to get inside. Oh my gosh. That was he, a late call. Yeah, well, he got fouled by three people. <laughs> yeah. Really, the call was late because they tried to figure out who to call the foul on. That was um, Malcolm Morgan, his third. Team fit. That'll send Darius Huff to the free throw line. Emory and Henry trailing by two. Huff's three of six tonight. Got shooter. Who's got shooter? And 74% on the season. And he misses that one. Emory Ooh. Henry's the only person in there to get it. Antonelli comes away with it. It's Antonelli's sixth rebound on the night. Antonelli trying to find a ball screen doesn't. As he tries to get it to Looney, it's kicked by Huff. Reset the shot clock to 20. And it'll be Wass ball sideline out of bounds, trailing by two. Just over nine minutes to play. Into Looney, back to Rodriguez, a great wow, give and go. go. Yeah, he lulled him to sleep like we're just gonna get it in bounds and he got it into Looney and, and Rodriguez went on a streak. That's cutting with a purpose. That's one of the keys to the game. That's cutting with a purpose. He was like his pants were on fire going to the rim and drew the foul. And that was on Gardner, his third. Rodriguez two of four on the night because he went 0 4 in his last trip to the line. There we that, go. Those two, these two are going to be good. I, I'm just going to tell you, you, at least the first one, because the first one he's already shot and made. Putting Emory and Henry within one, a chance to tie it up. For WEHC and Emory and Henry Wasps basketball uh, comes proudly from Tom Graham and Kyle King of Edmonton. The second shot is also good by Rodriguez. We're at 9-12, tied at 60. That's Brown with it. Now over to Huff on the left-hand wing. Back up the top to Harris. Harris makes a move, gets inside, dumps it back out, swing around the perimeter. Three on the way by Brown is good. Antonelli, hand off to Looney. Back to Antonelli on the right-hand wing. Looking for something, picks it up, can't get it inside. Finds Gabe Brown on the sideline. It gets batted away by Marabito. He's going to be replaced by Martin. Emery and Henry will have it on the sideline in front of their bench with 16 on the shot clock. Antonelli taps it into Looney. Malcolm Morgan tried to get inside with it. He had to kick it off to Antonelli. Shot clock. Morgan goes inside, tries to get inside and kick it to the left-hand corner. One of my least favorite plays, and that's one reason why, because you turn it over. 8.26, Emory and Henry trails by three on defense in their 1-3-1. One, one. Brown inside, high post. Took it to the rim and scored it. Who was that? I couldn't even tell. Ooh. Oh, that was Murphy. Antonelli back with it. Kicks it out to Brown. Oh, Brown, Brown, three on the way. There we three go. is good. I got to get him open. You leave Brown like that, and you're asking for it. 
and their coaches are going crazy. And they probably should, because I bet it was on the scouting report, don't let 32 have the three. Yeah, We're at seven, just under eight minutes, 7.54. And Marine Henry trails by two, 65-63. And it will be shock ball when we return. The Marine Henry basketball is brought to you with support by First Bank and Trust, offering mobile banking, Apple Pay, remote deposits, and more. Serving you with free checking since 1979, member FDIC and on the web at firstbank.com. <clears throat> Support for WEAC and ENH Walks basketball comes from People Incorporated, believing that every person needs support from others. People Incorporated promotes the dignity of individuals and families, move people into the economic mainstream, and works to develop existing strengths and resources within communities. For information about assistance with community development, education, employment training, family services, financial services, or housing, contact 276-623-9000 or peopleinc.net. All of the efforts of People Incorporated are directed by the concerns, hopes, needs, and dreams of the people served. Well, since our last time out and we were talking about how great we've been doing in the paint, we've been outscored six to nothing in the paint. But I'll, t I'll trade you some threes for those two in the paint. Yep. Henry and Henry now seven of 21. Well, so are the shot from Washington Adventist. Both teams shooting 40% or better. Well, Emory and Henry at 44. So things have picked up here in this game. We're at 754 remaining. The Wasps trail by two, 65-63. Ball inbounds to Harris for the shot. And Emory and Henry playing 1-3-1. Kick it out on the left-hand baseline, back up to Brown. Down low to the cutter, no good. Stick back, blocked by Brown, but that'll be a foul on him. So Martin cut in from his spot on the left baseline. What in the world? Oh, that last timeout was not the media timeout. So this is the media timeout. Last one was by the shock this is a media timeout so 20 seconds since our last timeout emory and henry wow. still trails by two but the shock will be going to the free throw line emory and henry's been 17 times and hit 12 of 17 from the free throw line the shock are six of 11. i just like i really like how they came back with the points in the paint yeah, and if, and if we can, and if we can also get Gabe Brown or get going from three, Brown's now got, now has 18 points. He's four or five from the three-point line to lead all scorers. Devin Flowers is is the leader for the shock with 16 points, six of 12 That's from the floor. He's one of one from three. I was going to say all his points have been in the paint, but I remember that one three knocked down as well. The shot shot the ball 66 times. Well, they had four, 40 Goodness. shots. 40 at halftime, right? Huh? That is crazy. Well, they have 18 offensive rebounds. So you get a lot more chances when you, you get a lot more shots than your opponent when they have eight offensive rebounds and you have 18. Mm. That is true. So at the free throw line for the shock is number 10, Martin. First trip to the free throw line for tonight. He's a 63% free throw shooter on the season but he drains that first one. We'll remind you, if you're listening here, the women's game will not be on broadcast on WEHC due to staffing issues. Second shot is also good for Martin. But you can catch it on all the uh, outlets like GoWasp.com and Facebook Live, and I think we have a YouTube channel as well wherever you find your Wasp Athletic live streams. Morgan brings it up for Emory and Henry, Malcolm Morgan. 
Hand off to Antonelli, left-hand wing. Antonelli finds the slip Good. of right. Looney. We've run that play before, and it looks great. That time Antonelli got the perfect pass to Looney as he slipped that screen. Now Emory and Henry trailing by two. Ball at the high post to Flowers. Flowers dribbles it back out, being guarded by Looney. Ball down, nope. down low, being doubled back out to Brown. Now it's tipped away. Emory and Henry can't get it. But there's eight on the shot clock as the shock has to bring it back up. Harris takes it all the way to the rim wow. and high off the backboard. That should never happen. Never. Antonelli trailing by four. The Wasp have set up offense. Antonelli brings it around. Brown's not there. Hand off to Looney at the high post. He finds Brown down low. Little baby hook by Brown is good from the short corner. Trailing by two, 641. He's got 20. On defense, Harris being guarded by Morgan on this 1-3-1 on the wing. Antonelli guarding down low. Flowers floater from the three-point free throw wow. line is good. <laughs> They're getting well, the lucky rolls. He's good. Well, he's 6'9". He's already above the rim when he lets go of it. And Emery and Henry trails by four. 615 to play. Rodriguez gets uh. past everybody but loses the handle on it. And the shot come away with it. Good steal. Murphy. Picks it off, but he That's lobs it down to Rodriguez. Nobody's there but the shock. Emory and Henry playing man-to-man -man now, I think. Ball in the corner. Good and they're trying to get it back to a cutter. Rodriguez steps in front of it, gets it to Brown. Brown loses his defender. Goaltender. Puts it up, but the defense is going to get called for goaltending. That's Darius Huff. 5.55, Emory and Henry still trails by two. Just when you think we're going to get a chance to get an edge, <laughs> we don't. Nope. Uh, Moynihan coming in for Kate Looney. Come on, D. Come on, D. Go. Moynihan, Moynihan's got seven points on the night, four rebounds. Emory and Henry playing 2-3 now. Or are they playing man-to-man? -man? No, they're playing a 2-3. Flower shot is short, the rebound tracked down by Antonelli, and it, but, and it goes off the shot. So that'll be Emory. And the hustle by Antonelli is what made that play happen because it was going to be their ball. 537, 71-69, Emory and Henry down by two as Antonelli brings it up for the Wasp. we got a 1-4 high set at the high post. Antonelli cuts through, ball screen for Banks. Now Brown hand off Antonelli. Brown tries to get inside, floated Good. by Antonelli, and stuffed by Brown. Great lob by Antonelli, and Brown just slams it down, and we're tied at 71. Coach Thompson getting the crowd going here. High post to Flowers, he steps it out. Inside to Liriano. Oh, my gosh, he walked. Huff. Takes three steps of four on his way to the rim, scores it, puts the shot back up by three. Morgan with it on the right hand wing, picks up his dribble, gets it to Brown. Brown's three oh. on the way, no good. Oh, three bound by Monahan. Monahan. Monahan goes hey. to the rim and gets it to finish. And Monahan will get himself to the free throw line, too. So the two points by Moynihan ties it up at 73 with 441 remaining. And he gets a chance at the free throw line to put the Wasp back in the lead, something I don't think we've enjoyed since halftime. Moynihan's one of one on the night. 75% free throw shooter this season. Moynihan, oh, it's too oh. strong and the rebound by the shot. We're at 440 tied up. Don't let free and we're playing man-to-man -to -man defense now. Don't let free throws be the killer. Shock around the perimeter, picks up their dribble. Flowers on the step out, being guarded by Banks. Nope. No good by Pitt. Okay, and Emory and Henry in transition. And Antonelli on the pass, the pass by Banks to Antonelli gets deflected away by Liriano. Liriano's going to take the long shot. <coughs> what spot? It's two shots. It's too strong, and now they're stopping play because there's, uh, I guess we're, is that, would Antonelli hit the deck there? Somebody hit the deck yeah, down there. Antonelli. So 
time out for Coach Rick Thompson to do a little housekeeping here. We're at 410. Emory and Henry's tied up at 73 with the visitors from Washington Adventist. But Emory and Henry has the possession here. We've got Antonelli, Brown, Moynihan, Banks, and Malcolm Morgan on the floor for Emory and Henry. Both teams with six team fouls in this period. Being guarded man to man, Morgan with it on the right hand wing. Moynihan comes to set the screen, rolls down low, and as he's rolling, a foul's gonna be called on the defender. I think Pitt. that's Pitt. That's Pitt. So we're at the under four timeout, because we're at 359, media timeout here. We're tied up at the King Center on the Bob Johnson court. So set the scene for us here, we're tied. Emory and Henry with three timeouts left, the shock with two. Both teams with, nope. Wait, they just gave us a team foul. Didn't they just foul? They did just foul. Yeah, they just gave it us a team like foul. Seems like they should have the team foul. We were at six. So, well, I tell you, the scoreboard says we have seven and they have six. But a sec, there we go. Now they're putting it back. That should be, they should have 17 fouls. There we go. We got them straightened <laughs> out here. <clears throat> and the possession arrow favors Emory and Henry. So Emory and Henry will be shooting one and one from now on. Of course, next time Emory and Henry fouls, the Shark will be shooting as well. Tonight from the free throw line, Emory and Henry's 12 of 18 for 67%. The Shocker, eight of 13 for 61%. And this puts Moynihan at the free throw line. Need these. He's been there twice tonight and hit one. That one rolls around and won't fall and Flowers doesn't even have to get up. He just rakes it off above everybody's head there. Tied up, Emory and Henry. <clears throat> Looks like we're playing a 2-3. At Flowers at the top of the key. Tries to go against Moynihan, nope. spin move. Too strong, wow. yeah, but it rattles in. So now Emory and Henry down by two. 3-30, Morgan's gonna, Malcolm Morgan's gonna bring it up for Emory and Henry, send Antonelli through. And Antonelli though comes back for the handoff. Ooh. Moynihan's gonna slip it, doesn't have it. Gabe Brown over to Banks on the left hand wing. Moynihan with another screen. Banks kicks it out to Malcolm Morgan. Three Short. on the way, no good. Rebound by Flowers. Emory and Henry trailing by two. 315 on defense for the Wasps. Stop right here. Pitt with it. Tries to take it inside. And Antonelli, in an attempt to strip it from him, gets called for the foul. That's his first. So both teams in the regular bonus, in the one and one bonus. And that puts Pitt at the free throw line. He's a 79% free throw shooter on the season, has not been to the line tonight. And he misses the first one off the front of the rim. You said one and one, the coaches are right. They said yeah, they one and one, and now they're letting him shoot two. Yeah, they're good job, Coach Thompson. What's wrong? We're Coach Thompson seems disappointed. I thought he got his way. Well, it's our ball, and he didn't get another free throw. <laughs> We're down by two. Morgan on the step out to Moynihan. Antonelli cuts through. Now to Gabe Brown on the right hand, left hand wing. Antonelli tries to get it inside. Kicks it out to Malcolm Morgan. Mal Morgan's good. winner off the glass oh. is good. We're tied up at 75 at 245 remaining. Oh Harris with it out top. Shooter. Three on the way by there we go. Marabito and on the rebound. Be in the bonus, Duff is gonna, Huff is gonna get called for the foul. That's his four. And who's, sent, who's going to the line? Uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Morgan. So we're tied at 75 at 237 remaining. Morgan's going, Malcolm Morgan's going to the free throw line for Emory and Henry. Again, Morgan 
is a um, 67% free throw shooter. He's one of two on the night. Come on. There we go. Now he's two of three, giving Emory and Henry the one point lead. He's go. good on that one as well. Now up by two, 77-75. We're at 235 remaining. Pitt with it, swinging around the perimeter. Left-hand wing, back up to the top. Flowers on the step out, being guarded by Moynihan. Flowers tries to get it inside, doesn't get anywhere. Antonelli tries to take it away from him. He kicks it out. Corner. Pitt with it. Corner. Now back to Pitt at the top. Seven on the shot clock. Threes on the way is good by Martin. So now the <coughs> shock up by one. 205, Emory and Henry trails by one. Banks to Antonelli on the right hand wing. Moynihan steps back, gives it to Antonelli. Posts it up. Antonelli gets it inside. Jumper Ooh. by Antonelli's no good, but he draws the foul. Coach's worst nightmare. No, worst nightmare for a coach is your kid. Your player drives in, gets fouled, doesn't make it, and they don't call it. That's the worst nightmare. <laughs> uh, that is, yeah. <laughs> It'd be a better yeah. scenario if you make it and you can go for three since you're down by one. But Antonelli at the free throw line strokes the first one. He's one of one tonight. Take your time. 154 remaining, and he strokes the second one as well. 79-78, defense for the Wasps. Flowers with it up top, being guarded by Antonelli. Em Emory and Henry in 2-3 zone. Back up to Flowers. Now to Pitt on the left-hand wing. Pitt, oh my, high dribble by Pitt, gets away with it, tries to get inside. Ooh. And he turns the ball over on his spin move. Great pressure defense by Malcolm Morgan. And as he, as, as Pitt tried to make a spin move, he just had, a, the ball came up over his head. Brown inbounds to Banks. 132, one point lead for the Wasps. Man to man by the shot. That's all they've been all day. I post to Moynihan. Moynihan takes it inside, puts it up, draws the foul. That's a foul on Flowers. And that's his four. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Strong post up by Moynihan and then working to get the ball down low. He's been to the free throw line three times tonight, only connected once. We're at 121 remaining. Emory and Henry with the one point lead. One hand, 75% on the year, so he owes us a couple here. Oh, oh man, that one hit the front of the rim, and it didn't look like it had a prayer. But I'd say his family somewhere said one, and it <laughs> rolled up over the front of the rim and in. Two-point lead for the Wasps. And hey. Moynihan connects on the next one as well. Up by three, 81-78, 115 remaining. Emory and Henry playing the 2-3 zone. Flowers with the ball up top. Now back to Flowers. He thinks about the three, takes it inside. Charge. And that's going to be there a we charge. Go. That was a slow motion charge, was slow wasn't motion it? Charge. Flowers is coming. That's his fifth. Moynihan is set. I think it was Moynihan or was it Brown? No, that was Malcolm Morgan. Oh, it was? He was set. And it was just like slow motion. He went right into him. That, talk about coach's nightmare that's that coach's <laughs> nightmare you got the ball you have the ball and a chance to tie it up with a minute eight and you get an offensive foul in other words a turnover turnover so emory and henry with the ball up by three 81 78 each team with two timeouts remaining possession error favors the shock the shock with 10 team fouls so every time they foul emory and henry's getting two Emory and Henry with seven team fouls, so the shock will be in the one and one should the Wasps commit a foul. So the shock picking up full court, man to man. Malcolm Morgan with the ball out of bounds. We have Banks, Antonelli, Jake Moynihan, and Gabe Brown on the floor for the Wasps. Come on, come on, and, get it open. 
Whoa. So Emory and Henry uses a timeout instead of trying to force an inbounds pass. And now that they've seen how the defense is going to operate on this full court pressure, we'll see if Emory and Henry changes their tactic here to get the ball inbounds. So the shock set up in man-to-man -man full court with a defender on the inbounder. Um, and they weren't really face guarding. They were just playing tight defense there. Emory and Henry sets up now with Gabe Brown with the ball uh, to be the inbounder. More, Malcolm Morgan at the three-point line. Banks and Antonelli split at closer to the half-court line and Moynihan back deep. So Banks gets it, gets it out of the corner, gives it back to Brown, now to Antonelli. We got to get it across, guys. Get it across, guys. There, there we, we go. go. Moynihan with it, skips it across to Morgan, now to Antonelli. 55 on the game clock, 15 on the shot clock. Antonelli being guarded man-to-man -man up top. Gets it to Banks on the right-hand wing. Banks makes a move, tries to get inside, kicks it out. Oh, and hey. no. Who scored that? Antonelli. So he drove inside and just floated it back. All the coaches and officials were standing in front of me, and Antonelli was in the middle of the paint, and he just floated it up over the defense. So the officials are adjusting the game clock to 42 seconds. Emory and Henry, 83-78. I think our largest lead has been six, wasn't it? It doesn't so. matter. Uh, we just <laughs> want to have the lead at the end. Man-to-man -man defense by Emory and Henry. Okay, That's Huff. Now back, driving inside. Emory and Henry deflects it. Ball on the floor, and Emory and Henry comes away with it. Brown with it. Get it across the half-court line, kids. There you go. Brown with it. Gets it batted away. Number 10. Uh, Martin, his first. Whew. I was like, they were holding it in the backcourt thinking, somebody's going to come found me. I'm like, get it across the half-court line. 83-78, 22.6 remaining, and Gabe Brown to the free-throw line with 24 points tonight in his first trip to the free-throw line. He connects on that one. 82% on the year for Gabe. Gabe Brown connects on the second. Now Emory and Henry up by seven. As the shot gets it inbounds, 22 seconds remaining. Trying to take it inside, do take it inside. High off the glass, no good. Rebounded by Banks. Gets it out to Antonelli. Antonelli's going to get it across the half-court line, and Emory and Henry can run out the clock here. Their first victory since January 31st. Emory and Henry's going to win it at home against the... Shock of Washington Adventists who fall to 18 and 9 on the season. And this pushes Emory and Henry up to 15 and 8. So stay tuned for some recap of the second half or the game, actually. And we will also talk to our player of the game. I'll remind you, those of you that are expecting the women's game to follow this one at 7:30 on WEHC. Uh, that game will not be broadcast on WHC due to staffing issues. That game will, however, be available on the live stream with audio. So if you want to listen to what uh, your commentators have to say, tune in to um, just check the links on GoWasp.com. The women's game will start in 30 minutes. So it's 722 now. They'll start the clock here in a minute. So it should start about 752 um, for the women's game, well, they will take on Bluefield State that they were supposed to play last week, but due to a COVID concern, uh, we were here ready to start the game, but a player tested positive during warm-ups, and so the game was postponed, and we will we will play that game, makeup game, tonight. So exciting tally by the Wasps who come from behind. Well, ahead by one at the half, then down by as many as seven in the second half, maybe eight, and come yeah. from behind. And we talked about points in the paint. Hey, points in the paint. Well, we finished with 44 of our 
of our 85 points in the paint. And we out pointed paint points, the visiting shock 44 to 40. And as we pointed out at halftime, they had 20 points in the paint, we had 14. So we outscored them in the paint 34 to 20 in the second half. What stands out to you about stats or want to run down the individual scores for both teams? Yes. Um, Gabe Brown, 26. Uh, I named him player of the game. Um, number, uh, Jake Monahan gave us 11, five rebounds. Malcolm Morgan, Malcolm Morgan and Jacob, both Morgans gave us 10 points. The Morgans. <laughs> uh, Rodriguez gave us, Rodriguez, Antonelli, and Banks gave us eight points each. And each was six each was rebounds. Six rebounds. And, and Antonelli with five yep. assists. And Looney with four points and six rebounds as well. Um, for the shock, their leading scorer is Flowers with 20, Huff 17, Martin 11, Pitt 9, Harris 6, Brown 5, Murphy 4, Marabito 3, Gardner 3, and to get playing time but no points, Daniels and Lorino. So Emory and Henry came away after uh, after saying at the beginning of the game we were shooting, our shooting percentage was in the dismal range. We ended up shooting 49%. We were at 30 early in the game. So huge change of uh, swing of events for Emory and Henry. The shot come away shooting almost 41%. Emory and Henry made 20 of 27 at the free throw line for 74%. The shock only 8 of 14. Now, as a former coach, I always wanted to shoot more free throws or make more free throws than the other team shot. So we made 20. They shot 14. You also want to have a lot of assists on your makes. We had 14 assists on 29 field goals. They had 10 assists on 31 field goals. Emory and Henry ended up 7 of 23 from 3. wonder what we were in the second half from 3. Let me see if I can do that math. Uh, that's them. Oh, that's the, this, that's the game total. Let's look at halftime and see if I can see. Let's see. Halftime we were 5 of 16, so we ended up 2 of 7. Not all that not all that significant or happy to write home about. Uh, rebounds, we ended up losing the rebound battle 41 to 39. We talked about second chance points, but they ended up pretty even, 19 to 14. And we ended the fast break points battle 16 to nine. So while we're waiting on uh, Gabe Brown, we'll give you some. Yeah, here he comes trotting out here now. We'll let you know that men's basketball will be in, will be in action again here at home on Saturday at 7 o'clock. It's alumni day. They'll be taking on Bluefield State. The women will be uh, uh, and men will both be in action here on the following Saturday, their final games of the season, home or otherwise. They're home on February the 26th, both playing Carolina University senior day for both squads. The women will tip it off at two and the men will follow at four o'clock. Our player of the game got sidelined by looks like family or friends or fans or whatever. <laughs> Let's give you some um, uh, athletic action from um, other teams at Emory and Henry. The softball team opened up their season with a sweep of Mars Hill winning eight to nothing and six to five. They also swept Barton. No, they split with Barton. They were won the first game, lost the second one. They have a double header, or they played a double header yesterday with Mars Hill and split with them. Baseball went to King last weekend and played four games, two on Friday, two on Saturday. They won one on Saturday and lost the other three. And this Saturday they'll be at home Saturday and Sunday they'll be at home against UVA Wise playing two games each day. Track and field are at the, at the uh, 
DMR Invitational in Winston-Salem. Women's wrestling is at the NCWWC Southeast Regional Championships. Um, this Saturday, softball will play against Lincoln, Pennsylvania on Saturday and Sunday and play a doubleheader both days. And men's and women's tennis are playing at LMU on Saturday against West Virginia Wesleyan and also against LMU. So that's the upcoming uh, news or games coming up for Emory and Henry. Well, Gabe, welcome back to Player of the Game. We have we've done this already once this season, yes, haven't we? Yes, ma'am, we have. All right. So first half, we 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 were sitting over here. We had the keys to the game from Coach, and I bet you heard about that at halftime. How we weren't doing them. Yes, ma'am. I correct. bet you did, didn't you? Yes, ma'am. We were over here with the keys to the game, crossing them off like we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. So what happened, I mean, we were up one at halftime, and that was a huge turnaround from, you know, how we had been playing. Yes, um, what, was the, what was the key in the second half, you think? Uh, well, at halftime, uh, Coach Thompson uh, challenged our captains, uh, Maka and Malcolm, and our upperclassmen to lead the rest of us, and uh, that's exactly what they done in the second half. They pushed us to be our best in the second half. Well, you hit a couple of threes. That didn't hurt any. <laughs> that's great. Well, one of the things it said here on the scouting report, I mean, the keys to the game, coach said, you know, we want to play inside out, which we did not do early in the game. But we were able to, it said, you know, they were going to pound the ball inside. Well, they drove the ball inside. We started driving the ball inside, and that made things happen. People got to the free throw line. Coach just came by and tousled his hair, for those of you who can't see it. Yeah, so we were able to get the ball inside. Did, do you think that helped you get open for the three yes, from the three range? I think so because it collapsed the defense and allowed us shooters to get open, and uh, they did a great job following me and everybody else. What was the defensive strategy? I know we played we played man, we played one three one. I think we were playing a two three at some point. What was the? Did we play something on a make and something on a miss or some? It's a little bit of a mixture, just uh, whatever was working for us at the time, that's what we stuck with, too. So you play the front of that 1-3-1. One, one. It's strange from a guy who probably always played in the back on defense in high school yes, to now have everything happening behind you. Yeah. How have you made that adjustment? Uh, well, I just got to trust my teammates to communicate with me, and they're, they're doing a pretty good job of that as the season's going along and let me know where everybody's at. Just communication is key. So we've played four games, before tonight, we played four games in February without Jalen, with, well, we played a long, without, a long time without Dylan. We played without Jalen and Jake Moynihan since January 31st. That was the last game they played in, and we went 0-4 in that stretch. So what was it like having Jake back tonight? Oh, it was amazing to have Jake back. He's a, he was a leading rebound in Indiana, so to have that presence on the court, him getting rebounds, him getting stops on defense. It was just great to have him back. It gives us a little bit more depth. Yes, Some yes, of man, those games on the road I watched on the Internet, and I'd look at the bench and, like, there's more coaches on the bench than there are players available to go in the game. Yeah, it's rough having it like that, but we just got to manage through it. But it's great to have Jake back. It gives you a little bit more freshness, don't yeah, you think? Because exactly. I felt like you guys were playing as hard as you could play in some of those games, and you just had nothing else left to give. That's exactly right. Yeah. So we, we get Bluefield State. We get another shot at them Saturday. What do you think that's going to be like? Uh, it's going to be a revenge game. They popped us at their place, and we're going to do the same thing here. There you go. Well, anything you would like to add? We have give you a chance to say anything you'd like to say. Uh, credit to them. They're a good team. It was a fun game, and uh, all the glory to God. Well, thank you. That's, uh, that's uh, I started to say Cade Looney. That's Gabe Brown, the sophomore from Quintwood? Quintwood, yeah. yeah. I wanted to say, I want to know they've switched over to the women's game. I don't even have the stats here anymore. So uh, that's our WEHC player of the game. So we, we have uh, 20 minutes left here, uh, Anthony, before the start. Oh, we're not coming back here. All right, so uh, just to remind you, the women's game is coming up. If you're on WEHC, you need to switch over to GoWasp.com and the live stream 
if you want to know what happens in the women's action against Bluefield State. So for uh, Brandon Cox, I'm going to send it back and say thank you, Anthony Smith Jr., for running the board for us tonight for this first game. And we'll send it back to you uh, for the rest of tonight's programming. Thank you, Anthony.